And so we like to know your assessment of the whole, uh, the, the atmosphere, what it feels like. Well, I think um, our assessment of the atmosphere is that the atmosphere for this election is tensed uh, compared to the uh, last election. And we are saying that uh, based on some of the findings we've gotten uh, and our, what our data is showing, for instance, we've been able to track and mark incidents of electoral violence to like about um, uh, two major senatorial districts. And uh, we have also seen a lot of issues around these elections. Also, for instance, I'm going to give you in Malaysia, um, in Malaysia houses that have been sporadic gone short, uh, I mean, in the process of some of the uh, people collecting their PVC. And um, even yesterday in Oshobo, there was shooting. And then even today, which is a day to the election, you as you can, I mean, as you can see, we've been, I mean, the, the news of the arrest of the chairman of NURTW, and then most of this thing is making the whole environment to, to be tense. And again, that is just on the... I mean, on the aspect of um, the violence. And at the same time, our assessment is that um, two leading political parties in this election think, I mean, feel like they have a lot to lose. So it's more or less like, um, um, it's more or less like putting in all their best to make sure that they emerge. So they are not leaving any stone on turn. And don't forget the two people contested against each other uh, last election. So one feel you were cheated. And uh, so this time around, you are not happy going to shoot me again. So they are really putting in everything. Then again, when you look at um, what happened in um, um, in, in, in Ikiti, you don't you don't really have much of the uh, much people uh, coming in. Um, I mean, in terms of uh, the the campaigns in Ikiti, was not as intense as you have it in Ashu this time around. Uh, our data shows that um, there have been attacks on campaign ground. When I say attack, personality attack in more than the issue based campaigning. So most of these things are, is making the atmosphere to be chat. But however, what we one of the uh, Comforting uh, issue is the deployment of the security agency. The IGP is deploying like about uh, 21,000 uh, security agencies, and we also feel that, as, um, of course, if they can really do their job without um, uh, with neutrality, then we are likely going to have a peaceful election and uh, I mean a credible election. So another issue, the issue of what's buying, is what happened in the Kitsia election, and do you think? Uh, with the efforts of big groups of politicians coming to the state, do you think we should be saying we should be expecting more of vote buying in the election? election? Well, whatever vote buying we witness in the kitty, uh, we should see we are likely going to see a greater percentage in Ashu. So, and I think uh, one of the things is that if vote buying took place in 16 local government in the kitty, it's going to take place in 30 local government in Ashu. So, and again, in Ashu, you have from our research, we have three uh, major. Um, what uh, three major different types of um, vote buying going on in Russia. So uh, what people focus on is just the one that happened on the election day. So number one is the institutional vote buying. The institutional vote buying is where uh, candidate and political party go to institution and association and then give them money and then give their leadership money to, so that the whole association declares for them. So that is more institutional vote buying. So that is why you can see this association has declared for this. this association has declared for, declared for this even political party smaller political party say hey, we are stepping down we are adopting uh, this so the almost of this thing uh, you have exchange of money taking place the second one is the questionable empowerment that is going on that is the second type of weak band that people don't know so when a few um, weeks to election or a few days to election the government just suddenly uh, realize or the, the ruling party just suddenly realize they need to open employment better and they say we are going to employ 20,000 youth, 30,000 youth, and then just a few days to the election. What are you guys looking at before that, that time? So that is more of a questionable empowerment, and that is that this is more on the as from the angle of the ruling party. But even the other candidates too, the other political party too, are also doing this. So most of them set up foundations and then they start doing questionable empowerment. This is where they think that oh, they are going to 
uh, I mean, they, they want to empower youth, they want to empower entrepreneurs, you know, and then uh, in the process, they, they come and register. So when people, we are saying we want to empower 30,000 people, you can imagine, and then through uh, one foundation or the other. So it be, it, these are votes by, and most of these things are tied to the their PVC. Yeah, I mean, most, so these are the questionable uh, uh, empowerment. So on the election day is the third day, is the third one, which is just more is what we call retail vote buying. So the retail vote buying is just what you see. Uh, somebody just votes, and then at the end of the day, he was giving 2,000, he was giving 5,000. And that is what people focus on an election day. Now, those ones are basically for undecided voters. So they buy them at the polling unit. But the real voting, the real vote buying has been happening, you know, with institution, with empowerment, that has been going on. Now, but on the election day, uh, we, see, we are going to see vote buying. And at the same time, it's difficult, pretty difficult to to track and to uh, and, and to also make an arrest. Now, and I say this this way because the politician knows the electoral heart talks about you can't commit offense within the 300 uh, meter radius um, within the polling unit. So that is why you now see these people, they only need to station somebody to confirm that you truly vote. So is either you are giving something, a signal, or hand, over, hand, uh, hand you over to someone, where you go to like about seven houses to that polling unit with outside that radius to go and collect your money. So the actual sharing of money doesn't take place at the polling unit. And that's why it's difficult to make an arrest. So when you vote and they confirm, they can direct you. And that's why in Ikiti we saw is that some people vote and they were just, all of them are going to us, I mean, the same direction. So this is these are some of the things we are going to say. However, some people are also, I mean, some of the party also, from our finding, has also been doing uh, uh, what we call them um, postpaid, I mean, prepaid. You understand? We are money sent to people electronically, you know, before the election day. And when they do that, they know who and who they send the money to. So if they are sent money to 100,000 people, so they, they know that that is 100,000 votes secured. So, but these are the things we are dealing with. But we hope that this can be, uh, uh, what, um, this can be up so that it doesn't become part of our electoral caution. So, uh, talking about how this can be up, what step can be I can take over that Well, I, I think the most important thing we need to look at now is uh, we need the Electoral Offense um, uh, Commission B because it's difficult, absolutely difficult for people. I mean, for, for, for uh, I need to prosecute some of these people because they have a lot. And I'll give you one example. Now, in 2019, you have, um, after 2019 election, the total number of petitions that came out from that election was um, um, within the range of um, eight, over 800 petitions. And all the 800 petitions, INEC were joined. So INEC was going out, in and out of election tribunal. You know, so you want to expect them also why they are the higher lawyers because they don't have enough lawyers. So why they are going in and out of election tribunal, you also expect them to also be prosecuting offenders. So that is why even I could tell you that they don't have that capacity. So one of the things we are looking at is that um, the Electoral Offense Commission can be a very good tool to see that um, uh, vote by in court because they can they can they can they can actually uh, be prosecuted now the, the issue is this the reason why this is still high is because nobody has been successfully convicted you understand so if and don't forget you know when you look at efcc efcc pride themselves in the amount of conviction they are able to make you understand so if we now have election offense commission who pride themselves in the amount of people they are able to do due to vote by so it's because there has not been a successful conviction so when people are convicted i think a vote by is going to stop so let's look at inclusiveness of the election of people with disability being able to vote do you think i need to make any improvement to what we saw at the election Yes, I think I need to make a lot of improvements and with what, and that is one of the things we will be tracking, with what 
I may have told us at the stakeholders meeting, uh, you know, what they are saying now is that look, they have been able to map out where the person with disability are, and they have made provision for braille ballots, magnifying glasses. So these are the things we just need to go and track and see. But in terms of that improvement, we have seen that. Then again, for the first time, you know, um, I make is good. I mean, I make is employing 30, uh, seven, 37 ad hoc um, officers who are person with disability. That is an improvement. We didn't say that in the kitty, but now they are going to have 37 ad hoc officers who are person with disability. So that is talking about even in more inclusiveness. So, but we only need to just track this and look at that compliance. Of course, in 2018 election, 2019 election, they've been talking about big ballots, paper, they've been talking about uh, magnifying glass, which we don't see. But maybe because they don't do the real mapping. But this time around, they have come out to tell us that they have done mapping and we are going to now begin to assess them based on that. So with that, uh, we, we, we are going to see maybe, I mean, improve um, inclusiveness in this election. What, what's your final word for the people as we so I think my final word for the people of Oshun State uh, is to come out and vote in this election, and most especially vote without, uh, I mean, selling your vote. Now, if we sell our vote, two things are likely going to happen. Number one is this: that the unpopular candidate is going to emerge. So the unpopular candidate may not have the solution to the uh, the problem the state is facing, but because it's the richest who is able to pay more for vote, then he comes in, and that shows that. Look, the candidate we are having is not I mean, coming from the will of the people. So people need to look at that. The second thing and the last thing I'm going to call on the people of the state to look at is that they need to know that, look, if you say your vote I mean, on the election day and if you collect money to go and vote, so it's a complete transaction. So they, they, they are telling you, please give me your vote and I'm going to go give you this money. So when you collect money, you've lost your right to talk. Because what they do after, you have no right to criticize that particular government. You have no right to demand accountability because they have paid for the service. So, but when you uh, do sell your vote and you vote your conscience, then citizens have the right to demand accountability from the government. They did not hold anything. So that is our call to the Thank people. You, Thank you.